just a little bit of housekeeping up front. Um, try to make this as non-technical as possible. It is also the last session of the day, so if anybody is actually interested in technical aspects of it, I'm going to stick around afterwards. If you want to find me, then we can go into more detail. Don't miss the dinner. Fair enough. We're just at the new 6.30 departure for the, at the accommodation at 7 o'clock down there at West Point. Uh, questions? Feel free to ask at any point in time. Um, I'm probably, well, we'll have some at the end, but uh, I always feel it's better that if you can, you know, ask your questions in the context of things. And without further ado, to use your phrase, we'll dive right in. I'm going to be talking to you about packaging, about distribution packaging, like as you would do in Debian and Fedora and Ubuntu and Gentoo and so on and so forth. So the job of a package maintainer or someone who packages software for distribution is to take a source package or to create a source package which starts from a pristine tarball, usually the upstream project, and then adds a number of patches. One patch or a number of patches, that is, doesn't really matter at this stage, but we'll be going into detail on this as well. Specifically right now. <laughs> I did a little bit of rearranging on the slide, so I hope I can catch my, catch my flow back. Um, so traditionally, a lot of the software packages, the source package formats, have been using something called monolithic diffs, which means everything that is different between your package and the upstream software is contained in one huge, humongous file. That doesn't necessarily make it very easy for people to work with, so a lot of uh, people have converted to something called patch management, which separates out features and bug fixes into individual patch files within Debian, which is where I stem from. Um, this is a recent development, or not so recent, but we actually have to use third-party software to do that, dpatch and quilt. As far as I understand, the RPM package format already allows for multiple patches to be applied, and Gen2 does that as well. So, uh, if we get rid of the monolithic diff and we go into a patch series, we go using a patch series, we have a couple of benefits. For the one hand, it's more transparent if you know which patches are being applied. And this has actually been interesting. Um, in the Debian project, we had this open SSL debacle about 10 months ago. And uh, as a result of that, a lot of packages have switched to patch management systems because we now have a website, patches.debian.net, which can show you these patches individually. So it's a lot easier for anyone out there to get a quick overview of what sort of modifications have been done in the package. It's more transparent. It's also easier to track because effectively you're not tracking a component or part of a monolithic diff, but you're actually just tracking a file. Therefore, it's easier to exchange those data with other peers and upstream because it is just single files and you don't have to extract anything. And it also facilitates special use cases because it's very easy for you to just drop in another patch into the package in case you need to make modifications that are specific, for instance, for embedded devices. But then you have patch conflicts. And Patch conflicts are not necessarily nice to resolve because many of you will know what version control systems are and many of you have looked at the output of version control systems. These are diffs. I'm skipping ahead of myself a little bit here. These are basically diffs of diffs, so you're versioning patches and if you have a conflict within those patches then it looks a little bit like that. This is actually just diff output but the conflict is not going to look much different. But if you could tell me very quickly what this is actually supposed to be doing, I found it was interesting because it had all the permutations of minuses and pluses and two different columns up front. So you're basically looking at a diff of a diff. And you know, like early in the morning, I might be able to wrap my head, ar head around that and just work with it just like that. But later in the day, or if there's been a beer involved or something like that, this actually starts to get a little difficult for me. Your knowledge may vary. I consider it a huge fail. I took this picture. I was actually there when the fire truck crashed into the road. It was pretty spectacular. So now we have a series of patches. And if you, how many of you guys are familiar with Quilt? Right, a 
it's a little bit more than half of them. But basically, quilt is just simply a stack of patches. So in order to apply the third patch, you need to apply the first and the second patch, and then you apply the third patch. Now, I do somehow question the usefulness of such a patch series, simply because some of these patches may depend on others. Now, if you recall that I said one of the benefits of the patch series was facilitated tracking and facilitated exchange, as soon as your third patch actually depends on your second patch to be applied, you can't actually take the second patch and the third patch by itself and apply it. Now, whoever <coughs> of you, how many of you are uh, into version control systems in general? All right, and now, Hands down for all the people, or keep your hands up, hands down for all the people that have not had any experience, significant experience with distributed version control systems yet. There's a little bit double negative, confusing one minute. So the hands now up are the ones that actually have experience with distributed version control systems. All right, that, that was just a little bit of hand keep, housekeeping for me. Um, well, you guys have used version control systems, and version control systems are about tracking content. They are there to make it easy for you to resolve such patch conflict, and also to manage um, content in a way that you don't actually have the sort of dependencies that I was talking about um, with the patch series anymore. At least you haven't flattened the patch series at that point in time. With version control systems, the changes are easier to track, and you will notice I highlighted the word track there, because with distributed version control systems especially, tracking is a very um, powerful feature, because every single change is uniquely identifiable, globally uniquely identifiable, so somebody in Sydney may be working on something, and I may be working on it over in Europe, and we can't really conflict, because the version control system manages to keep track. This really facilitates exchange, and well, I guess um, you all know that the Linux kernel project is using the Git distributed version control system, and there are 2,000 people, as we learned earlier, um, working on the kernel, and these 2,000 people are actually able to cooperate properly because the version control system is doing exactly that for them. It tracks the changes. It manages the contents for them. So we have facilitated collaboration, and an additional benefit, we also have the complete history. If you just have a patch series, and you make a change, and you recreate the patch, whatever you did up to that new patch is basically lost. Now it depends, maybe you have some sort of backup copy, or maybe in the archive of your distribution, it's still stored, and the history is kept, but it's, it's not easy to find, it's not easy to work with. And if you want to use history to track down bugs or to learn from other people's mistakes, then there's definitely a great benefit to using version control systems. It is also, especially the distributed version control systems, these are optimized for content merging. So you don't really get to the problem of having conflicts in patches or version diffs because the version control system is optimized to actually manage that content for you and it, it can be pretty smart about how it merges changes with each other. So those of you who have used distributed version control systems and I guess even those that have used the plain old version control systems are probably familiar with the concept of branches. Whether you use them or not, um, I'll just I'll just say uh, it doesn't really matter at this point, but um, let me quickly show you what I mean. I really like the system. It's awesome. So topic branches are essentially ways of keeping modifications separate from another. Where did the pen go? There we go. So you may have your upstream. Sorry? Oh, <laughs> not talking to me. We have some sort of development line going on here, which will label upstream. And at some point in time, I may decide to make a modification. So I branch at this point, and I keep my modification on a separate branch, which is completely independent. If upstream makes updates to the software, I can just merge in those changes and have the updated upstream 
in my branch, but also my modifications still in that branch. And now you can take this as far as you want. I can have another branch that depends on this. I can have another branch that depends on this. And I can merge across. And what the plain old version control systems like CVS and Subversion could do, or maybe they could do branches, with the distributed version control systems, branching became really, really powerful. Not to say sexy. It's really easy to branch, it's very encouraged to branch, and once you get into it, you will not let go of it anymore. When you develop a feature or a bug fix, this may be a bug fix, this may be a feature, depending on that bug fix, then the commonly accepted term for this is topic branches. And now I can turn, put this thing back down. And topic branches is basically what we use in the version control system as a sort of parallel to what patches are in the flat file. So when you have a patch series, you have a series of patches that you can apply with a plain old patch program on Unix systems. When you have topic branches, you can merge these topic branches into one branch where you unify all your features and then you have all the content merged in there. So it's essentially the same. What used to be a patch is now a topic branch if you look at packaging from a version control perspective. And the idea here is that in order to avoid the conflicts that we earlier discussed in the patches, you want to merge as late as possible. You keep all your topic branches separate forever. And then you merge just right before you are releasing your package. And when you find a new bug, or maybe when you find that your bug fix hasn't actually taken care of the problem entirely, you simply return to the topic branch, make more changes there, merge it back in, and then release. So you merge just before you release, and you use the version control system all of the other time to track the content of what you're doing, to track the modifications. This gives you all the benefits that we earlier um, discussed, specifically the history, and it also allows other people to access your modifications in a way that is governed and controlled by the version control system. I'm tempted to say even enabled. Now, VCSPKG.org is a project that is distro independent. As a matter of fact, we'd like to call ourselves distro independent and version control system agnostic. So there's not going to be any flame wars in here today. But if you think about cross-distro collaboration, then maybe some of your red lights will go on. Because you know, I come from the Debian project, and we can't even settle on a consensus within our project. So how the heck are we supposed to settle on an agreement with other projects? That's what we have to do, though. In order to use distributed version control across distributions, we have to agree on a common ancestor so that the distributed version control system knows exactly um, knows the ancestry of all your changes and that there is a relationship between the changes that are being done at Fedora and the changes that are being done at Debian. Beca only because it has that common ancestry can it actually do the tracking of the content and the merging and exchanging of the modifications very sim simply. Um, and because we can't, because it's going to be hard, and I make no, uh, um, I don't want to deny this, and it's going to be a hard task to get different distributions to collaborate, actually sub-projects of distributions to collaborate, um, the decentralized aspect of these version control systems comes in very powerfully. Fedora does not have to use Debian infrastructure in order to manage their packages, which they wouldn't, just as much as Debian wouldn't be using Fedora infrastructure to release their packages. But because it's a decentralized system, everyone can do their own thing completely independently, and yet the version control system enables the exchange of content and modifications. So it's going to be difficult to agree. As a matter of fact, there's going to be violence. Something along those like, I hate you Debian people type things, which I have heard before. But I say that actually the distal wars are sort of a thing of the past, at least that's my perception. Um, you can still have them in the pub and enjoy all that, but it's about time that we start to cooperate. So, using this fancy multimedia stuff here, 
I now have a document camera and I would like to just simply recapitulate what I just said about packaging. What we have to start with is a pristine tarball. Can everybody read that like that? Is that fine? And we take this tarball and we make a number of modifications to it. Then, with these modifications, we build. I can't draw cogwheels, but that's supposed to be cogwheels. We build the package, and what we get out of it is an RPM package, or a dead package. That's completely dependent on the actual distribution. Now, if we look at these individual steps here, the diff, or the type of modifications you can make to your package come in different forms. There may be features, or you may have bug fixes, or, well, security fixes, I'll, I'll call them bug fixes for now. I mean, you can have as many of those as you want, basically, or you can have distro-specific ones. In an ideal world, features and bug fixes should actually go back upstream so that everybody can profit from it. But the reality is that many upstreams either don't really want your features yet if they haven't been tested because they're being very conservative about the software, or maybe the features that you have implemented is not how they would like it to be implemented. For some reason, upstream may not be interested in actually integrating your feature, or may take a very long time to integrate your bug fixes. And this time between your creation of the bug fix and your creation of that package, and upstream's inclusion of your changes is the time where you, as the package maintainer, are in charge of tracking the differences. If Upstream comes up with a new tarball, you need to port your features and your bug fixes that have not been integrated to the new um, version and resolve any conflicts and so on and so forth. And worse yet, not only do you have to do it, but also your colleague over at Fedora or your colleague at Gentoo who basically is doing the same stuff as you because we are package maintainers. We create a distro, packages for a distro. We all do the same type of thing. So what I suggest with VCS-PKG.org is that when you think not in terms of having upstream and the distro down here, and just a sort of straight line in between, I have many different colors, I love it, but to actually introduce an additional layer in between, which is a sort of cross-distro layer. And this cross-distro layer is where people, interested people, I mean, this is, um, maybe I should make this explicit, I'm not trying to make it uh, mandatory for every single person who is developing on a distribution to use this sort of system that I'm proposing, but it's optional. If you like what I'm saying here, if you want to use this and collaborate, on your package with the colleagues at other distributions, then we're trying to help you. We're trying to come up with ways in which you can do that. And the enabling factor in all of this is the version control system. Let me go back to my laptop. Are there any questions about this so far? So the way we currently are looking at it is simply by using, was that a question? Yeah, yeah. Just the, uh, the each, of, each branch corresponds to one, one patch, one kind of thing that's being fixed. Yeah, and the question was whether each branch corresponds to one patch, um, one thing that's being fixed, and yes and no, it is very much up to you how you want to do it. Whether you want to have one branch that just has nine page updates or nine page spelling check updates, um, or have one branch for every single typo that you correct, it's completely up to you. I 
they, you get to a point where it's unmanageable, although we are developing tools that will help you to do that. But still, like, you know, you might not actually want to have separate patches for this. But yes, what you, what, what you can think of or what you used to think of in terms of packaging as one patch, as one isolated feature, is now simply thought of as a topic branch. And each of these topic branches has a name. And the first thing, one of the first things we did in the project is to define namespaces. Actually, this is an RFC type definition, so it's a proposal. But it kind of seems to make sense. Upstream features and bug fixes that are intended to go for upstream end up in the upstream namespace. There may be a features namespace or a bug fixes namespace. It kind of really depends on how you end up using it, but we're trying to standardize some sort of nomenclature here. We're even thinking about having a namespace for package file formats so that, for instance, Mandrake and Fedora can collaborate when the change that they have to maintain is specific to the RPM package file format. I don't actually know if that's necessary, but you know, we can think about it in that sense. And branching and namespaces are very cheap. And then obviously, in the last row, you have the distro-specific ones where you can put your own thing. But there is a problem, and, uh, and a question. Should I ask the distro-specific um, sort of patches that you were talking about? What about actual, when you've got different versions of distro, say you've got Lenny and Edge where you've got support, and it's how you have different um, dependencies, etc. OK. Um, the question was, what happens when you have different versions um, of your package, for instance, in the distribution, like uh, Lenny and, and Edge, and you have to maintain them separately because for security reasons or something like that. Well, if you, um, if I allow me to quickly return to that graph that I drew, um, it, since branches are so cheap, there's nothing stopping you from saying, down here is a tag that corresponds to Edge. And I keep I keep developing my package, and at some point in time, there'll be a Lenny tag. Don't ask me when. <laughs> now, I'm actually, in, in the packages that I maintain, I just leave it like that, because I can always, at any point in time, say, oops, there's actually now a need for security fixes for the Edge package. So I just simply create a branch up here. And that becomes the Edge security or uh, edge updates branch. And then you simply develop on here and you end up having another tag that corresponds to your edge security release. That's a very distro specific thing and this is not something that I, I want to like, um, tell you how to do that. It's just an idea. But obviously if, if I have a security problem here, um, I, I'm likely to develop it on a separate feature branch so that others can actually share it because they're probably going to be affected as well, unless it's something like OpenSSL. Did you have another question? question and I guess it, it really depends on whether Nagios 3 is backward, or backwards compatible to Nagios 2. Um, if it isn't, then at least in the Debian project what we do is that we release a new package. So it is, not, it is a new source package. We start from scratch simply because we want people to be able to have Nagios 2 installed and not force them to move to Nagios 3 simply by upgrading to a new release. Other distributions are probably going to do it similarly because it's, it would be asking a lot. Like uh, Apache 2, Apache 2 was another one of those. You can't really expect people to do that. All right. So that answers all those questions. Now, as I was saying earlier, um, it gets pretty complex if you have a number of branches. 
if you have one branch for every single typo that you're fixing, it gets very, very complex at some point in time. And in addition to that, as we've seen earlier, not all of you put up the hands for distributed version control systems. My theory for that is that we are in a very, very sort of early adopter phase for distributed version control systems, and that many people have looked at them, but then simply said, like, look, I, this is, you know, like, fix it before I'm going to start looking at it again. And it's perfectly reasonable because I agree the distributed version control systems are what I consider to be um, generation one distributed version control systems. Generation zero was Arch. Um, and a couple of other ones, Monotone and so on and so forth. But the uh, Git, BZR, Mercurial, they are sort of generation one. I think we will be seeing over the next five, ten years different projects that are going to take up the ideas and implement them in a more intuitive way so that it's easier for everyone to use them. We've seen it with SVN and CVS. I mean, CVS has been around for 30 years. SVN has been around for something like 15 or something like that. And it's still not, not everyone is using it because many people are just not ready to use it, are not ready to adopt the workflow, can't really wrap their brains around it. Now, I don't want to say this in a sort of like condescending type of way. It's perfectly understandable. Why should they? I mean, this is pretty complex stuff, the distributed version control system. And as soon as you start to understand that once you have like a centralized repository and everybody kind of like pulls from there and sends the commits back up, and that's how you synchronize SVN, for instance. People are starting to understand that. And now the distributed version control systems come around and say, like, OK, we don't have a centralized instance anymore. We have 2,000 people that are working with each other. The first thing that I did when I looked at distributed version control systems was like, holy moly, how am I ever going to keep up with any of this? This is completely beyond me. And it takes a long time to work yourself into it. So uh, at the moment, distributed version control systems expose way too much. And specifically in the context of packaging, they certainly do, because when I'm packaging, I don't really want to be dealing with commits. And I don't really want to be pushing and pulling stuff and branching and so on and so forth. What I really kind of want to do, and um, I've had interesting discussions here. Some people disagree with this. Some people will agree with this. But if you come at it from a, from a perspective of a graphic uh, artist who actually wants to touch the package for some reason, or translator or something like that, what they really want to do is package operation. They want to say, instead of create branch, commit, push, merge, and so on and so forth, what they want to do is fix this bug and then build a package. That's sort of a completely different level at which they would like to think. And asking them to deal with distributed, uh, directed acyclic graphs, which is uh, the ancestry graphs at the bottom of these distributed version control systems, is kind of a little too much, in my opinion. So what we're trying to do is figure out how we can use version control systems for distro packaging define a layout for the repository, define a workflow as much as I hate that word, but process, whatever you want to use. It's just very really overloaded. There's nothing better. Define a workflow for all kinds of distro package maintainers. So that's why we're actually trying to talk to Fedora people and Debian people and Ubuntu people and figure out what are their needs? What do you want out of a system like this? But also security teams, QA people, release teams, and you. I mean, everyone. Everyone should be able to just use these things without having to wrap their heads around the complexities behind the distributed version control systems. So the goals of the project are to make it possible for distros to work together on packaging. And we've seen the peace symbol earlier, you know, world domination, that kind of thing. Um, if we, we have millions of people working on open source and we have 100 distributions, that's a lot of wasted time to me. If we actually manage to work together better, then I'm sure we can speed up our development a little more and uh, take more of that market share quicklier. Quicklier. Wow. I'm a non-native speaker. Um, and one of the next steps that we're planning to do is uh, develop a helper to do this, to hide all of the different distributed version control systems, all the bowels of them, hide that and hide all the details behind something that abstracts to the level of packaging. Now, I've had many people who told me, like, yet another wrapper, is that a good idea, and so on and so forth. Who knows? 
I mean, right now, what we're trying to do is figure out what are the needs and then see if we can implement it. And if you don't like it, maybe you have a better idea. In that case, you should join the project. Oh, yeah, and it should be usable by you. Now, the way we're going about this is sort of a strategy of small steps. We're at status quo, and we can't really take a project of the size of Fedora, or Debian, or Ubuntu and just kind of switch it over, unless we want to have like double-digit release times, years between the releases, because it's going to take forever. And uh, there are projects that have tried to do this, sort of like revolutionize everything they do, and I think they kind of just died, or they will never come up with anything. So we're going to try to take small steps. And the first step, the first thing to do now is to acknowledge the fact that we're working with version control systems already. And a lot of other, Debian is doing that. A lot of other distributions are investigating version control systems for packaging. Ubuntu and Fedora and everyone. I keep repeating these uh, distro names. I hope you excuse me for that. Um, they're all investigating version control systems. And that's a sign for me that the idea is good. It may not be perfect yet, there may be a lot of room for improvement, but the general idea is good. So let's go with version control systems. Let's figure out how we can use them together so that we don't come up with 15 solutions um, that are going to make it difficult for us later to cooperate. But how? Let, let's also figure out how we can take version control systems and map them into what we currently have, into the infrastructures that we use and the distributions to actually manage or build and serve the packages that make up the distributions. So right now, um, I've already talked about uh, the topic branches. There are a couple of uh, tools that are being born or have been born, which make it easier for you to develop patches in a distributed version control system. And I guess one of the, um, I'm not going to put this back up and then bring it back down, but one of the things that if you, if you think about the graph that I drew, um, one of the things that becomes very difficult as soon as you have a larger set of branches is how do I know when I have to update a branch? How can I keep a branch up to date? Let's say I have 15 branches that are all like codependent within each other and upstream releases a new version. How can I actually make sure that every single one of my branches now applies to the new upstream version? And there are a couple of projects that are addressing this for the different distributed version control systems. Bazaar calls them Looms, for instance. Then there's a fairly new project, TopGit, which does something similar for Git. The implementation is very different, but I guess the main output or the goal is the same. And uh, Mercurial has had that for a long time, the patch queues. Even Arch had those, but uh, that's fortunately dead. And more than that. So what you can do with these tools is not only manage all the different branches that, are, that you're maintaining and make sure that they're always up to date to the latest upstream release, you can also use these tools to flatten your entire tree into a patch series. So with TopGit, that's the one I know best, um, you can say, I want this set of patches flattened, and then TopGit goes and does a topological sort of your dependencies, branch dependencies, and outputs a quilt series. And then you can take that quilt series and put it into your Debian package, just as if you had maintained a patch series for the package all along. And so the, all the tools that you use for packaging continue to work, quilt and all the uh, build demons, they know what to do, but you're merging late. You have all of the content in the version control system and not in single patch files that are non-versioned, or that are versioned in like double diff style, confusing ways. So a couple of projects are investigating this, uh, looking into this, and are already using it. Uh, I myself, uh, the maintainer of MDADM for Debian, and there's a guy over at Fedora who's working with me, and we're trying to figure out what our workflows are, how we can merge them. Um, the Free Desktop Games team, which is a couple of uh, people across distros, have recently started to just collaborate using version control systems, but they, are, they don't have any standards yet. And I guess at this point in time, it's important for me to say that um, VCS-PKG is not necessarily at the point where we want to look at, or we're, we're searching for one solution, but we're sort of in the experimentation phase. We're trying to figure out what 
is needed, what works, what are the different approaches, sort of a breadth first search of the domain in, our, in, in the hope to find the way forward. Exorg has been doing it for a while. They have been one of the earliest adopters of Git and one of the most insane and powerful users of Git. And just recently, also Ocamo, the Debian Ocamo packaging team has teamed up with Fedora. And I think they also have some Gen2 people on board um, to create packages for the different distributions from a common source. But then you look at it and you like version control system, two series, two source package, it's often like a hack to me. We should really be building straight from the version control systems. And that's sort of the next step forward. Once we know how to actually use the version control systems to manage the content that we need to manage to build our packages, why export it to a series? Why not just simply tell something out there, here's a tag, and here's a cryptographic signature on the tag, so go ahead and build that package and give it to me. And there are a number of people working on that. Um, for Red Hat and Fedora, it's Doug Ledford, who's the MDADM, MDADM maintainer. Um, the Ubuntu has worked on this for a long time. I think in 2005 or something, they started with something that is still called No More Source Packages, after the wiki page, where all of the specs and all of the ideas and everything has been collected. And uh, well, Debian is myself who's working on it, and other people, the Debian people, in the VCS PKG.org project are also looking at the idea of how to build the packages straight from the version control system. And at this point in time, maybe I can say that, um, oh, that's actually a slide later. Ignore that. What are the future steps? And that's the slide that I was going for. Um, we need more cases. We need more people who are working on this. And we basically need people to spread the word because we have about 30 people who are working on VCS PKG right now. Working on is uh, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but 30 people who synchronize and share ideas in our IRC channel and mailing list who are exploring the domain and trying to come up with ways to solve the problems that are coming to all of our distributions. But it is very, very Debian-centric. I would say maybe 20 of the 30 people are Debian people or Ubuntu people. We have Fedora people, we have um, Gen2 people, but we don't have enough. So the more, I guess the more distributions we can get excited in this, uh, the more of a chance we have to map out the entire domain to figure out what the good solutions are and what the requirements are for individual package maintainers to use version control systems. And assuming that we get there at some point in time, assuming that we can actually manage our packages in version control systems, then we can move to distributed bug tracking. And that's the topic that really makes me happy. <laughs> distributed bug tracking, a lot, of the, a lot of the benefits of distributed version control is, the, is offline ability to work. Because it's so decentralized, it doesn't actually matter whether the repository that you're mainly working on is on some server somewhere or on your laptop. And that means I can be sitting at some sort of beach in Hawaii, sipping my cocktail and committing to my repository, and later synchronize with somebody else who's been sitting on a beach in Thailand and also is sipping cocktails and committing offline to their laptops. <laughs> I think uh, you know, cocktails can enhance creativity, but there, wasn't there an XQCD comic about this? Sort of like how many beers you drink and then yeah, exactly. The Bonner Peak, exactly. When it was, and it was released. Yeah, so, you know, I don't encourage drinking and packaging, but sometimes on the beach, exactly. And distributed bug tracking seems to me like the logical next step out of that, because now we can do version control on our packages. We can do everything that we want, but we still have to connect to a centralized bug tracking server. And worse than that, I will never find out about the bugs that Fedora people find and possibly fix in the same software that I'm packaging for Debian unless I make a concerted effort to go out and pull the Fedora bug tracking system. Now, if we had distributed bug tracking, that bug tracking would happen right where the code is, which also means that fixing a bug in the code and closing the bug, changing the state of the bug to closed, is an atomic operation. 
There are already tools out there that are doing it. Um, dist dash bugs, I think, is the keyword you want to punch into your favorite search engine if you want to um, research this a little further. But for me, this is pretty much all I wanted to tell you today for VCS PKG. I do want to have a quick uh, chance here to drop uh, a little bit of information about the research I'm doing, and it's actually related. I, I'm using VCS PKG as a vehicle for my research. The question that I'm looking at is, assuming we get a tool that can do version control packaging for distros, how do we actually get people to use it? And in my research, I'm currently looking at the Debian project and trying to figure out what the influences are that determine whether a maintainer uses Bizarre or uses Git or hates Quilt and prefers Dpatch or uses Dip Helper versus CDBS. And I hope that if I find out these influences, I can come up with some sort of framework that can allow you to assess your tool and answer questions like, how could I invest the next two days in the best possible way so that I have a steep adoption curve? And that's it for me. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes, I'm tempted to say yes for a lack of a better solution. And I don't know whether in 10 years we won't be sitting here and somebody will be slagging the idea of using version control for change management. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen, but I don't want to rule it out. But I think there's, uh, in your question, there was also another um, sort of sub-question. Um, you were talking about a corporate environment that has been maintaining packages for years, and, and there's a lot of history that is possibly not even accessible anymore, but it's messy. You know, the patches are messy. And uh, can, we actually, can we actually import that into a system like this? Because that's what we're going to have to do. That you can't really say um, import all of it. If you want to have patches separated into feature branches, you will probably have to go through these patches in turn and actually like do some quality work on it. And you know, it's a great opportunity, isn't it? It's like spring cleaning on your packages. Whether your boss is going to pay for it, that's uh, just a question of how well you can um, convince him that this is actually a benefit for the overall quality and a future-proof investment. That's the good way to use. Did that answer your question? Yeah. All right. There was another one. Okay, so the question is, how does distributed bug tracking work? Because if I mark a bug closed in Debian, then it's not necessarily closed in, in any of the other distributions. Well, it could be. It depends on how you design this. And there's a lot, of, like, this is even more pre-alpha, the distributed bug tracking than distributed version control systems. But the idea seems to be that um, you make it an atomic operation um, to have the bug closed and also have the patch, the fix, in the code. So that's one commit. And if Fedora wants to have that bug fixed as well, they can pull that one commit from you very easily because we're using the same version control system because we're collaborating on it. But by pulling in that patch, they are also changing their local representation of the bugs. So basically, by integrating content with bug tracking, you are, you are make, it's integrated afterwards. Like you can have. 10 different representations, 10 different repositories with different bugs open and closed and so on and so forth. But because the actual commits that change the bug status and the ones that fix the bugs are 
um, tied together, um, you can, and, and because the, the version control system does not lose track of what it's doing, you can make a conscious choice, say, I want all of the bugs fixed except for this one. And then you simply don't pull that one commit, which means you don't get the fix in the code, but also your local representation of the bugs is not updated and the status of that bug is still open. Any other questions? Yep. So your, your question is, from a QA perspective, about duplicates of a bug and about one person or Red Fedora fix it, uh, filing the same bug as someone over at Ubuntu, um, it depends a lot on how you represent those bugs. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to say, look at, on the disk bugs um, homepage, and there are resources there. Um, and one of the resources, for instance, is a tool called CIL, C -I -L, which is the command line interface bug track, whatever it is. I don't know what it stands for exactly. But it basically, it's very Spartanic at the moment. It's a, it's, it's a new tool, and uh, there hasn't been a lot of uh, input yet. So if you look at it, make sure to write some feedback. Um, but the, the idea is basically that you just imagine having a flat text file um, in your source repository, and every line is a bug. Now, if you find there's a duplicate, because after merging stuff together, like you get all the Fedora bugs into your local re re repository as well, if you find there's a duplicate, then you just join the lines, or however you do it. I mean, it's really a question of local representation. So, and so you can see it, I mean, you sort of say, show me all the bugs Fedora has, I want to subscribe to that one. As soon as it's fixed, I want to pull that directly into my DTS. Well, you can't do that right now, because it's not implemented. Conceivably, I think that should be possible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Fedora would have to have a sort of like public yeah. API for it or some sort of public repository where it, which is there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any question? Yeah, I think that's what CIL does, the tool. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, we could integrate those two. It would be one way forward. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Remember the kitten. Yes. I should repeat your question. Your question is, uh, uh, how, what the percentages of uh, stuff that stays distro specific, changes or patches that stay distro specific, versus stuff that is actually upstream applicable? For, for this right, right. Well, NVIDIA is a bad example because I have a very good upstream. So anything that uh, you know, I, I fix pretty much immediately goes into upstream. But that's a, that's a rare case, I would say. Um, uh, for other packages, I don't have the statistics. So, do we have more time? If you want Are there more questions? 
I can see my arm when I go to the bar. Martin, thank you. I think this afternoon Martin has, in his session, presented the most compelling suggestions I've ever heard for inter-distro cooperation. And I hope it, something happens, Martin. Thank you very much for your presentation. I'm sure you'd all like to join me. Thank you.